No, you don't. Know. Well, uh, shorty that ran into my fiance car. It's something different about him, and I know that he has a girl, but everything about him just says that he's supposed to be mine. Like, I can honestly feel it. Man, I see you out here doing big things, man. Being here with you was really, really making me happy. I felt the same way, too. When I get home, I got a lot to handle. You do, too. I know you got a man. Dirty, dingy ass motel like this, bro. This right here, this is our reality. We got something special. I have to save myself. Don't touch me again. You know what's happening. Get out! Get out! All my life, I've been waiting for somebody to save me. I knew that it was gonna be you. What's poppin' T Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I am here with my exclusive interview with the star of my upcoming film, Paper Heart. Everyone say hello to the Kristen Clark, who plays Scott Lynn Irvin <laughs> in the movie. Hey, Chris, girl. Hello, hello. Y'all, it has been such a pleasure working with her. She has just been such a dream to work with. Tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Kristen Clark. I am an actress from Detroit, Michigan. Um, I've been acting now for three years. I have done theater, film, commercials, and it's just my art, my passion, like the thing that comes before anything else in my life. And so it's just been a dream. Yay. What um, other projects can they see you in outside of paper art? So you guys can see me in my very first film, which was First Lady um, mm -hmm. that I did in 2018. You can see me in that. You can see me in Chocolate Kiss, which is a romantic comedy That's on what Amazon I saw Video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Circumstances 2, which is on Prime Video. Um, Deceitful Passions is on Prime Video. And then right after Paper Heart premieres, I have a movie called Made for This. And it's um, it's about a boxer who has all these different trials and tribulations that he has to overcome. And um, that will be coming out in January 2022. So. Okay, girl. All right. Now tell everybody about your famous aunt, great aunt, <laughs> is it? Um, I just yeah. found out about this and it blew me away. Yeah. Um, so my great aunt is... Mm -hmm. The Dorothy Dandridge, the first African American woman to be nominated for Academy Award for Best Actress. She was robbed. She was robbed. She was robbed. <laughs> Grace Kelly should not have won, but all right, whatever. Right, right. Um, you know, friends with Marilyn Monroe, that whole thing. And just to kind of like simplify it, because people always say, like, is that really your great aunt? I'm like, yeah, that's my great aunt. So it's on my maternal side, and mm -hmm. it is my mom's father's aunt so it's my mom's father's mother's sister so okay. Dorothy Dandridge and Vivian Dandridge were sisters mm -hmm. and that's my grandpa's aunt and mother so okay yes yes, yes. so it runs in the family y'all um did you always want to be an actress oh my god since I was when I was five years old people would say um they would ask me like what do you want to be and I would literally tell them a princess or an actress like I swear to <laughs> And now I feel like I saw Meghan Markle. So now I'm like, okay, maybe, 
Maybe Boom. I can do both. <laughs> yes, yes. But my entire, entire life, like, there was nothing else that I wanted. And then I didn't really tap into it in high school because I was, like, always really, really nervous and super, like, didn't want to speak in front of people. Mm-hmm. And then growing up in the city, I didn't feel like I had the opportunity because it was in Los Angeles, you know? Yeah. So, I, but I wanted to do it my whole life. And then when I finally took the leap, it just, like, doors just started opening. Yes, you are a natural. You guys are witnessing greatness in the making. I I see big things, big things for you, ma'am. Um, so what was the exact moment, though, that you decided that you really wanted to pursue acting? The exact moment, I had all these, like, to be quite frank, I had a lot of, like, family issues going on. And so mm-hmm. I went to go stay with my grandmother. And this mm-hmm. was three years ago. And she said, you have like this amazing voice. You need to, um, you need to be on TV. And I was like, well, you know, and everybody knew I wanted to be an actress, but I was yeah. like, well, I can't do anything here. Like this is Detroit. I always used my excuse was like, always, I'm going to move to LA and do it. So I never had to act on anything. Yeah. But, um, so then my grandma was like, you need to go start going on auditions. So I would come home every single day and lie and say, <laughs> I went on an audition today. She'd be like, how'd it go? I'm like, it was great. And then she'd be like, did you go on an audition today? I'm like, yeah. She would ask me like every day for two weeks. And then finally I was like, okay, I need to like right, find an audition. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how am I going to keep saying this? Like, <laughs> so I was working for Dior doing makeup. Um, and I was in these acting classes and I was talking to a friend. And then she said, my friend, Dennis Reed is making a movie. And she's like, if you're actually serious, like, I can probably get you a role in it. I'm like, yes, I would love that. And that was like, that was the moment. It was just like, I kept saying it. So it was like, okay, I got to actually do something. And it's crazy because really what it comes down to is when you talk about things, you never know who's going to hear it. Exactly. So she's like, I know somebody. And then that was the, the day. Yes. And if you guys don't know, Dennis Reed is actually the director and producer of Paper Heart. Um, So outside of Dennis, what director are you longing to work with in the industry? Jordan Peele. Really? Oh, yeah. You do like horror and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. I'm trying to be like us out, get out, out. Like I'm trying to. That's it. (laughs) <laughs> you know yes. what's crazy uh robin said the same thing you and robin i swear are like twins i swear y'all <laughs> say the same answers to everything wait till you see our interview um oh, y'all oh. can't do the horror stuff uh-uh. only horror stuff that i can do is like monsters and stuff but when it comes like to the demonic stuff uh-uh no 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 like i have never <laughs> watched us will never watch us no no, no, no. <laughs> scary for me. Nah, bro. I'm mad you just said monsters. Like, you like starting like at tier one. Like, I could do yes. monsters. I could do. Mo- and what's crazy is I love gore and all of that stuff, but mm-mm, nope, I'm still afraid of Freddy Krueger. Like, no, uh uh-uh. uh. Nope, 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 nope. I will do a Freddy Krueger marathon in the dark for like nine hours Ooh, in a basement. Child. No, I remember when I was a little girl, my brother and them used to watch it all the time. And at night I would be scared to get up and go to the bathroom because I would think he would come up through the toilet and get me like, "Mm -mm, no, I'm still afraid of that man. No. (laughs) So I know the answer to this question. Well, one part of the answer to this question, who is your favorite actor and actress? Okay, (laughs) I know, you know. My yeah. favorite actress in the entire world is Sarah Paulson in the Hello. entire world. Oh, she just gives her all. I, I just, my favorite. My favorite actor, oh, that's always so hard. Like, okay, let me think, let me think. Who is somebody when I see them, I'm like, this is going to be so good. Mm-hmm. Well, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Yeah. I love Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, but there's this new guy that I've been really into lately. Um, it's the guy, did you see, you saw Harder They Fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And did you see Lovecraft? Yeah. Oh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, um, uh, Majors. I really like him. A I lot. love him. Yes. He is one to watch. Like, 
I can I see just got him. chills. Yeah, yes. like I like him. He's gonna be a nomination contender in the future. I can see him very much getting nominated for Oscar, a Golden Globe, or a SAG because what he did with Lovecraft Country, and then I don't know if you watched um, the Marvel um, sitcoms that they have on Disney, and he was on the Loki one, and he played the villain, and it was like some Shakespearean type shit. Like he nailed it. Like that boy. Yeah, he bad. He's bad. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm loving him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched The Harder They Fall now, like probably about four times. I love that film. It was <laughs> good. Well, actually, the standouts for me were Regina King and Lakeith Stanfield. Like they murdered. Oh, her. I love Lakeith. Yes, yes. He a beast. He's a beast. Yes, and he's so like cool about it. I don't know. Like yeah. in his roles, it's just his cadence is just kind of like. Yeah, very laid back and just chill, kind of like, yeah, but it's powerful what he's able to do on screen. Love Even him. in the Black Messiah when he was playing like the snitch, right? Black Messiah. Yes. It feel yes. like. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is your dream mm -hmm. role, though? Okay, my dream role. It's, it's hard because it's like, I really want this like terribly like scary, demonic role. Like, have you seen Suicide Squad? Yes. Okay, so this doesn't really like qualify, but you know the Enchantress? Yeah, yeah. She's all like, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. But I also really want a superhero role. Like, I really yeah. just want to be like saving people, like doing a lot of combat fighting, a lot of flying. That's a lot my of shit right there. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's my shit right there, girl. I'm a huge MCU and DC fan. Like, I just yeah. actually finally got to watch Shang Chi, and it was really, really good. I got my life. Um, so, if someone was going to turn your life into a movie, who would you want to play you? Who would I want to play me? Mm -hmm. Um, who would I want to play me? I always tell people I want Meryl Streep to play me. I don't care if she. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so maybe Zoe Kravitz or... I can see it. I like her energy a lot, and I feel like it kind of reminds me of, like, my day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. so I think she could do it. Um, Issa Rae and I don't look alike, but my brother tells me that I remind him of her just because mm -hmm. I'm, like, really awkward and kind of just, <laughs> like, dry sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> And slow sometimes, but maybe it's maybe Zoe Kravitz. Okay, I like her. Yeah, I like her too. I can't wait to see her as a Catwoman in the new Batman film. Um, so what made you want to play Miss Scotland? Oh my God! Well, aside from the fact that this has been my biggest role, I love mm -hmm. you indefinitely. Um, <laughs> I like a lot, and I was just talking to somebody about this the other day because I feel like. Um, Sometimes, look, this is like my first real interview. I'm like, get your words together. Like, you got to be. <laughs> you straight. I feel like uh, sometimes Black films don't have a lot. They don't always have redemption in, like, there's no redemption. There's yeah. a lot of things going on that we do see in real life, but they don't always leave you feeling at the end like, okay, good job. Like this right. is, it worked out. And so I, just to, you know, not give too much away, but when I looked at Scotland, I saw a lot of me in her, mm -hmm. just someone who hasn't had a perfect life, but exactly. someone who has these dreams that are like, that could reach the moon mm -hmm. and somebody who is determined to like get those things figured out. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she's unbreakable. Like I miss yeah. everything. Yeah. Because she had a lot of, things coming at her from a whole lot of different directions, especially if you read the book. Um, yeah, she, po thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's had, real life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she had a lot of haters in her midst that was right there in her inner circle, which we've all gone through. Um, and then, you know, meeting someone, what do you do if you meet the love of your life and he's with somebody else? Right. That's that's an entanglement. That's <laughs> the <key. laughs> Exactly. Um, so how is Scotland like you and different from you? 
Um, I would say that Skylin is like me because she seems lighthearted. Like she, she'll go out her way to, you know, make somebody happy. She's very much a dreamer. Mm -hmm. Um, very much a dreamer, very much someone who's going to get the job done at the end of the day and do what she has to do. But she's also a little closed off when it comes to some of the things that she wants in her life because she doesn't trust it with other people. And I'm very much like that. Yeah. You got to be careful. You tell your business too. (laughs) Yeah. It's like your dreams are like this precious, like little treasure chest. And so I see some of that in her where it's like, okay, if I tell this person, like, are they going to like up me or like down me? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. we got that going on in common. Uh, The ways that we are different. I think that, um, I think that I'm a little, a little more intuitive about people around me. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little more like, um, I'm a little more on the defense about like, about people around me, whether it's friends or anybody, I'm like very, very intuitive. And so I kind of know when something's off a little quicker than what Scotland does. Yeah. And I kind of like separate from it right away. Yeah. And I don't see you cussing people out like her. <laughs> like cause she'll cuss no. somebody out in a minute. <laughs> you know what? That too. That's a really good point. I if you would have to, I can't even imagine what somebody would have to do for me to like get there. Yeah, because I had to I will post go home and you post allow, I was like, no, say you mother. <laughs> you was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give her cussing list to y'all. <laughs> Listen, I bet you, I'm you. i super glad you brought that up because that's the main way that we're different because I don't even be cussing like that to tell you the truth. Like, uh, when uh, something happens, I'd be like, what the heck? <laughs> I'd be like, oh, heavens. I yes, swear to I curse up a storm, child. It's like second nature to me. <laughs> so when I you- literally, like, something bad happens and I'm like, oh, heavens, no. <laughs> No, I'd be like, what the fuck? Stupid ass bitch. Girl, my mouth is reckless, reckless, reckless. I'm trying to be classy. I'm trying. <laughs> so what did you love about playing Skyland? What did you hate about playing her? Okay, what I loved about playing Skyland is I love I okay, well, that's probably more so of like a production thing. Cause I was gonna say I love the wardrobe, but that's a different answer. Mm-hmm. I I just love that she was just determined and that she was going to figure things out. I love that she stood up for herself yeah, and that she crazy. wasn't. And I loved how she like, when she knew enough was enough. Yep. She was out. Yep. yep. Out and done. And honestly, she wasn't really letting people walk over her. And I really like that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it was kind of like, okay, you know, you think you're getting away with this. You think you're slick, but you're really not. Cause yeah. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. I can't write a weak character. I tried one time and I hated it. I hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Cause I'm not a weak person in real life. So it's hard for me to write characters like that. So yeah. what did I not like about playing her? Oh, uh, what did I not like? Mm, I didn't like, I didn't like that. She felt that certain relationships were like, all that she could do. Cause you know, I don't want to give a lot away. Yeah. But I didn't like that. Um, I just wanted, I just wish that, that she knew that like she, the sky is the limit and that she deserves the utmost love. So like that part was like kind of sad for me. Cause it was like, you know, you get into it and it's like, no, you deserve so much more than that. But I've been there too before in real life. So it's kind of like, I guess that's why I hated playing it. I'm like doing this again. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yes, yes. But I'm so happy in the end she gets it together and she goes off on her own and does her own thing for a minute. And I think a lot of women need to take cues from that. Like sometimes you have to detach from things and get you together first. Then you can go into something else. So I love that, you know, towards the end that happens with her and she's able to stand on her own two feet and get her own shit together. And that's what I just was telling somebody about, about your script and everything with the whole movie. I'm like, you know, there were some things that happened in there that you would never want to happen to a woman, mm-hmm. but she was a strong person and she got through and there was a lot of redemption, like a yeah. lot of goals were accomplished. Yeah. So without giving anything away, what was your favorite line of dialogue in the film? 
Um, okay, let me think. My favorite line or dialogue. Um, <laughs> um I don't <laughs> I don't know how to explain. <laughs> My was you are a fucking bird. That's a lady because you said that from the depths of your soul. I was cracking up, and then one of my other favorites is when you told Knight in a specific scene, like I have to choose me. I have to, like I got. Yes, to. I wanted to say that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Most people have read the book. There's a few that haven't, but yeah, for the most part, everybody's read the book already. But yeah, that's my favorite line for you. And the slit your throat, because that is something that's my goal. If I have to go there, that's my go to line. <laughs> and that's yeah. if I like absolutely have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when, let me tell y'all, even though I had to cuss her, um, and coach her on some cussing stuff, when she got it, she got it. And it was believable. And I was like, okay, Scotland, all right. Y'all don't want this smoke. Okay, ma'am. Yes, because she beating up several people in this film. So what was your favorite scene to film? Honestly, oh, my favorite. Um, okay, without giving it away, I got to get better at this. Um, how do I say it? My favorite is when we go on the vacation and go to dinner. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everybody that's read the book knows that scene. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because that is, especially in the book and in the film, it's super funny and hilarious the way everything comes out. <laughs> but my aunt uh, had never read the book and she was over here about a month ago when I first got the first um edit back of the film and when it got to that part she was like oh oh wait a minute now <laughs> she was cracking up she was like lord he didn't took her to the restaurant with her looking like this she's like he need his ass kicked <laughs> that was my favorite 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 part i said who chile yes i had to pick out the most scandalous outfit that i could find child and we did it my favorite scene from you hmm I would have to say is the last scene. The you keep okay. I was gonna say that. I swear to God, I that love was... this scene. You look so stunning. I mean, face, hair, outfit, everything. It was just like the transformation. Because what I tried to do, you guys, when you watch the film, is show the evolution not only in her wardrobe throughout the film, but her as a person. So she starts off one way, ends up. Um, one way at the end. And so you see the evolution of Scotland throughout her wardrobe throughout the film. And so at that end, it's just like, boom, this is the person that she always wanted to be. And she did it on her own without anybody's help. So I loved it. Loved it. Yeah. Yeah. That was like really nice. Yeah. You look so, I can't wait for you to say you look stunning. Like this. The and way that's that what we want to give to people. Like we want to yeah. show them like, no matter what you go through, like there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's what it exactly. is for me. Exactly. She got it all in the end. Um, so when you had no, um, what was the most challenging scene for you to uh film? <coughs> I know what it was. <laughs> yeah, it was sexy time. It was sexy time. I'm like the one that I don't do for real in real life. Like, I'm like, this is really weak. I be in my pajamas at nine o'clock watching my child, child, child. But let me tell you, even though it was, you know, your first time doing something like that to that extent, you it was tastefully done. It was romantic. It was everything that it needed to be because what it was originally was supposed to be was real raunchy. And I'm actually happy that we didn't go that route because it would have cheapened the moment between them two. So I'm actually happy of the way everything ended up flowing. And I think when you see it, you're going to be like, okay. You look good. Everything is tasteful. Yeah. You're going to love it. Yeah, love that it. was, yeah. I was just looking at him like, <laughs> they're like, Kristen, you look like scared. I'm like, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Yeah, no, you didn't look scared at all in the scene. Yeah, like, and I love that. And I will say this for, uh, on behalf of Don. I really love that he stepped up on your behalf. And that's all I'll say is that he took one for the team. <laughs> He told me 
words to say. I said, thank you so much. Besides yourself, which actor or actress in this movie is going to blow viewers away? I, well, I really think that everyone is. Like, everyone. I mean, China. Yeah. China is so funny. Yeah. I think that she brings so much to the film. She's such a joy to watch. You know, Robin did her thing. Yes. Don is amazing. I know mm -hmm. everybody can't wait to see him. So I really, I think everybody is really just going to blow everybody away. I said it in all the interviews thus far, nobody slacks. Everybody pulled their weight. There's not one person where you kind of like, mm, yeah. no, like literally everybody in the cast did their thing. I'm so pleased and just so happy. Like it doesn't even seem like we're watching a film where there's like actual screenplay script. It seems like this is actual real life and we're getting to take a peek into these people's lives. Like everything came together so seamlessly. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So if you could have played any other character in this film, who would it have been? If I could have played anybody else, um, <clears throat> I'd have played Lennon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think, I mean, if I really think about it, it would have been between Lennon and, you know, the squad. So yeah, I probably would have played Lennon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, play the bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I would have tried to pull it off. Yeah, because your characters are totally different. Totally different. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what's going to surprise viewers about this film, do you think? Um, what's going to surprise them? I think they're going to be surprised to see that these people have so much depth. Like, this isn't just some love triangle that's getting blown out of proportion. Like, yeah. there's actually people at fault. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and there's people who aren't getting the kind of the kind of treatment that they deserve. So yeah. I think that'll blow people away to see like, okay, well, you can't really jump to conclusions with everything. No. And then also like, you don't really know anybody and what they're going through either or who they're going to become and what they can do. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, so who in the film do you think is most like their character and who's the least? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm... Uh, am, I'm like, am I? Yeah, I'm the least like my character, I think. Um, cause I don't be doing all that fighting. Um, no, no. murder is myself. most, most yada is most like murder. <laughs> okay. There you, outside the beat part. Yeah. Outside of the beat, no women. Yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> so who was the funniest person in the cast in real life? Oh my, oh my, oh dang. I almost gave it to Don because me and Don had a little moment when we were eating and I was crying laughing i did not yeah. know this man was funny like this but i gotta give it to china Ooh. but mina too like i don't know it's the toss between china and mina like okay i wish i could have seen y'all in action because y'all are a mess they are like i swear when they weren't there it was like i was going through withdrawal i'm like uh-huh yeah, because it They're really hilarious. does look like in the film, like y'all are four best friends, like for real, for real, for real. Yeah, like it came across so good on camera. So we got yeah. two more questions for you. Um, who was your, no, three. Who was your favorite person to work with? On set? You got, yeah, because you got to work pretty much with everybody. You and Don, yeah. Yeah, yeah I did work with everybody. everybody. Yeah. Um, I really like working with the girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really love like it. every time y'all all are together. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know, women empowerment. It's always like a blast with all of them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. What do you think viewers will take away after seeing Paper Heart? Oh, you know what they're going to take away is that there is always a light down the tunnel around the corner. Yep. You do not have to be in a situation that you do not want to be in, that you are not valued in, and that you don't feel safe in. You just don't have to like, no matter what happened in your past, it has nothing to do with what you're going. And that's what I want them to take away from it. No matter what you've done, who you've been has nothing to do with what you're going to become. Amen. And last question. What was it like working with moi? I, this question. I was walking my dog like she's going to ask me. I know it. But it was just, it was really, really comforting. It was like a blanket, like a support blanket because... <laughs> You just had everything ready, like the wardrobe, like if I was freaking out about my hair, you had my hair ready. Like I just like those were things I just did not have to worry about. Mm -hmm. And 
sometimes like those are things that you have to worry about. I'll just say that. Yeah. Yeah, But you just were like super, super supportive. I feel like we had a lot of trust, like for things like to communicate how we wanted things to go. So I guess it was just nice. It was so, yeah. I felt like so special. I will always go, yeah. this is so special. <laughs> yeah, because this was a first for all of us. Myself, you, Robin, Don, this was a first for all of us to have our first film. And I really, really wanted to make it something memorable for everybody, something positive to take away from the experience. And it has just been such a pleasure working with all of you guys. You guys have made this just so much easier for me, just with everything I have going on in my own personal life. So it, it's just been just a dream. And I'm just so thankful for every last one of you. And I just want to say thank you personally for taking on the role of Skylin. As soon as I saw you in Chocolate Kisses, I was like, boom, yes, she's the one. She's <laughs> my Scotland. Uh, not only are you amazingly gorgeous, but you're just so humble and sweet and you take the craft seriously, um, just as seriously as I do. So like I said, the sky's the limit for you. Big things are on the horizon. I will be seeing you going down those red carpets and everything in the future. I just know it. So yes, ma'am, if y'all don't know her, get to know her. Let everybody know where they can find you on social media and any projects that you can talk about that you have coming up. Okay. Um, well, first I want to say thank you to like, it's just been a complete dream working with you. And I just feel like it's going to change my life for the better. And it was just an amazing experience. And I can't wait to do it again. Honestly, yes. like you are the best. Uh, you guys can find me on Instagram at Chris Clark. So that's K-R-I-S-T-C-L-A-R-K-E-E-E. Um, or you can just search Kristen Clark. And um, that is, yeah, I'm not really like on Facebook and stuff like that. So Instagram at Chris Clark 3 E's. And then I have, you know, Paper Hearts coming out, obviously. And I have Made for This coming out January 2022. I just did a Chevrolet commercial that might be floating around, a little driving the car. So we might see that. But yeah, and so we could just, you know, all connect, stay up to date. And I'm always posting on there about like what's to come. You can find me on IMDb as well. And if you go on IMDb for Kristen Clark and hit the track button, it'll always like let everybody know when they got something new coming up. That is awesome. Thank you so much for doing this interview, T-Squad. Make sure you follow her on our social media. I'll have it, of course, posted below and down below in the description box. Thank you guys for watching this interview. Like I said, Paper Heart STL premiere will be December 4th. Then after that, we will be in Detroit December 11th. And then after that, you, you guys will be able to catch Paper Heart on IMDb and on Tubi. Can't wait for you guys to see it so we can discuss it and yeah. talk about it. We have a bunch of surprises coming up. Can't wait, like I said, for you guys to see all of these amazing actors in this film. You're going to love it. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.